Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to all the students and this is um, subject for um, um, manufacturing technology okay so section one so today we are going to look at on chapter three this is chapter three actually uh, plastic processing yeah so in plastic processing we can divide it to two which is uh, injection molding and also extrusion molding Um, now let's look at um, what what are we going to learn in injection molding. First of all, um, we are going to look at on the um, plastic processing. I mean the introduction of plastic processing. What are the process and equipments uh, involved? Um, uh, what types of machine that is going to be used? Uh, types of products being produced from uh, this process, and um, are they categorized under in the injection molding, which is a compression, blue molding, and last but not least, we are going to look at on product design and consideration under uh, injection molding. Um, so in general, uh, plastic processing is actually a very fast process, and um, it can produce a various uh various uh, geometries of the product however it depends i mean this process actually depend on the um uh, mold itself the more complex the mold uh the the the, the more complex uh, of the mold then the uh, uh the the cost to produce that mold be much more higher and normally uh, from this process no finishing uh steps is required so uh a lesser in cost in that section and then um uh, to produce a plastic plastic actually uh, only need i mean uh, the the properties of the plastic itself it has lower temperature and therefore lesser energy is um uh, is used to produce uh, or to shape the plastic and due to its lower temperature uh, uh, handling of the product is much more simpler and easier for plastic shaping process okay and again finishing parts and uh, finishing steps for plastic normally uh, is not required because the mold itself have been designed to produce a final product um typical plastic uh, types of plastic that is suitable for plastic processing is thermoplastic and thermosets in our previous lecture uh, these terms these two terms have been introduced to you which is a thermoplastic and thermoset whereby thermoplastic actually uh, it can melt under heat after curing i mean in general yeah whereas for thermostat plastic uh, retains their form and stay solid under heat once it is cured these are the examples for uh, thermostat and thermoplastic products for example uh, poly polyamide polyamide um chairs um uh, plastic bottles and so on so forth whereas for thermosets like epoxy resin melamine floor or melamine table and so on so forth um the process for injection molding in general it starts with um heating the plastic and then uh, it is being injected into mold cavity after that we let it cool and solidify before we eject the product which is called as molding the final product is known as molding and the finished part is actually the net shape which means that uh, we don't need additional uh, finishing steps uh, for uh, that product the process is very fast and uh, can produce complicated uh, part however again uh, the more complicated of that mold then the higher cost is needed to produce such product and uh, these types of process are actually suitable for thermoplastic. Now let's look at the equipment and the process of the inje injection molding. If you can see from this figure, it can be divided into two sections, which is injection unit and clamping unit. Okay, and the overall machine that can be found in our lab is um, such as follow. Okay, now let's look at one by one for each section. This is injection unit. Well, in general, this process is actually more or less the same as in, uh, as in 
uh, extruder, classic extrusion, extrusion process, which are the ones that we are going to look at after injection molding. Well, the first step is that if you look at this one, this is the hopper. This is hopper, hopper. And the materials or plastic pellets being added are being fed uh, into barrel through this hopper. Okay, so inside barrel, um, there's, a, there's, there's a screw here. This is screw. This is the screw. Okay, this screw. Okay. And the function of screw is that it used to turning for mixing and heating the polymer. And it also acts as a ram to rapidly move forward the injector mold, uh, molten plastic into the mold. This is a look at, this is the mold. Okay, this is mold. And this screw actually is a um uh, is known as reciprocating screw because it has dual function, which is push and pull. Okay, um, for pushing, it's actually uh push um the um molten part towards mold and pull back because it wants to um take the molten uh molten plastic before it push towards the mold cavity so uh, basically the function of um, injection unit is to melt and homogenize the polymer and number two to inject uh, the molten polymer or molten plastic into mold cavity um, whereas for the second section is clamping unit okay this is clamping unit it function is uh, to hold the two valve of the mold in a proper alignment with each other and keep the mold closed during injection by applying clamping force. Number three, to open up and close the mold at appropriate times in the cycle. Clamping units can be divided into two. If you notice just now, if you look at the figure here, this is the... Um, fixed mold and this one is a uh, movable uh movable uh plate fixed plate and um movable plate because the movable plate um i mean we need to uh, uh move it in order to eject the final part uh, this is the final part or the final product so in general the cycle for injection molding process includes number one the mold is closed and clamped Number two, a shot of metal is injected under high pressure into mold cavity. The mold surface is cold. Let it solidify and plastic. Uh, yeah, and let it to uh, and let the sol uh, plastic to solidify. After that, the screw is rotated and retracted. non return valve is opened to allow fresh polymer to flow forward again. Number four, the mold is opened. Then the finished part is ejected and then removed. Let's look at the video on the uh, clamping injection, cooling injection. Clamping and then injecting the molten plastic. After that, let it cold and solidify. If you notice, the screw is pulling uh, forward uh, and backward. And then injection. Now, finish. Let's look at another video for um, injection molding. Injection molding is the most common method of producing parts out of plastic material. The process involves injecting molten plastic at high pressure into a mold shaped in the form of a part. Once this plastic cools and solidifies, the mold opens and the part is ejected. Injection molding is an extremely versatile process that can produce parts with holes, springs, threads, hinges, and undercuts in a single operation. Injection molded parts can be simple or complex and can be solid, foamed, reinforced, or filled. They can be small. Injection mold shaped in the form of a part. Once this plastic cools and solidifies, 
the mold opens and the part is ejected. Injection molding is an extremely versatile process that can produce parts with holes, springs, threads, hinges, and undercuts in a single operation. Injection molded parts can be simple or complex and can be solid, foamed, reinforced, or filled. They can be small or large, thick or thin, flexible or rigid. Injection molded parts also lend themselves to endless decorative effects. They can be polished, textured, hot stamped, plated, colored, or clear. No other manufacturing process offers the range of capabilities injection molding provides. Injection molding machines range in size and complexity from desk size units up to machines the size of a small house. All injection molding machines are a combination of two systems, an injection system and a clamping system. The injection system heats the thermoplastic material to its appropriate viscosity or flowability and then forcefully injects it into the mold. There are two types of injection mechanisms, the reciprocating screw, which is the most common, and the two-stage screw. The main parts of the reciprocating screw injection system are the hopper, a reciprocating screw inside an externally heated injection barrel, a hydraulic motor, and an injection cylinder. Resin material is fed to the injection barrel from the hopper. These hoppers may be filled manually or vacuum fed automatically and often have dryers attached to the top to remove the moisture from the material. As the resin enters the injection barrel, it is driven forward by the rotation of the screw, which is powered by the hydraulic motor. The resin plasticizes or melts as the turning screw drags it towards the nozzle end. This is referred to as drag flow. Drag flow causes the polymer molecules to slide over each other, creating frictional heat, which melts the material. External heating bands provide additional heat to the injection barrel. The heating bands bring the material to its final temperature and compensate for the radiation heat loss. The temperature is controlled by three thermocouples in the barrel and one in the nozzle. The screw consists of three zones. The first zone, which is one half of the screw, is called the feed zone. It has a constant flight depth, which forces the material together and rids it of air. The second zone, called the melt zone, has a decreasing flight depth, which reduces the plastic volume. This causes the plastic molecules to rub harder against each other, plasticizing the material. The melt zone leads to the third, or metering zone. The metering zone has a constant flight depth much smaller than that of the feed zone. This section acts as a pump. The tip of the screw has a one-way valve which lets the material flow only towards the nozzle end. The force of the plasticized material pushes the screw back as it turns. This builds a chamber of plastic in front of the screw. When enough material for the injection shot is melted, the screw stops and pulls back to decompress the material. For injecting the material, the one-way valve closes as the screw is hydraulically pushed forward by the injection cylinder. This sends the molten material through the injection unit's nozzle and into the injection mold. The primary speed and the injection pressure, called the packing pressure, is high, usually around 20,000 psi, but sometimes reaching up to 30,000 psi or higher. A secondary lower pressure is applied shortly after the initial injection. At the time of injection, the material's temperature ranges from approximately 320 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, or 160 to 320 degrees Celsius. Once the plastic solidifies, 
no more pressure can be exerted upon it in the mold. The reciprocating screw then begins to rotate again, melting material for the next shot. Okay, so that is the illustration. I mean, yeah, the illustration of um, plastic uh, injection molding. So again, um, let's come back to um, our lecture and uh, let's look at the um, uh, items or yeah, items in the um, the machine itself. Yeah. So if you notice, uh, the most important part in injection molding is its its mold itself. Yeah. Um, uh, this mold is actually uh, being uh, uh, designed or custom designed and fabricated for the given part to be produced. Well, not single mold can produce uh, all types of products. Yeah, so it depends on types of product being produced that need to be produced, and therefore one mold for one types of product. And um, there are several types of mold that can be found in the market, but the most common. A mold is known as two plate mold, yeah. Two plate mold, which means uh one uh plate is fixed and the other one is um a movable plate. Um, it can consist of um single or multiple cavities, but if you look at this figure here, it consists of two cavities, okay. Cavity one, and this one is cavity two. The parting surface is where the mold opens to remove the part. So this is the parting. Uh, this is parting. Okay, uh, yeah, parting line. Let me highlight with blue color here. Okay, this is parting. All right. Um, for distribution channel, yeah, of course, um, um, more or less the same as in a uh, casting. Uh, we do need to have a distribution channel in order to make sure that it can fill all the cavities uniformly in the mold, cavity, mold cavities. And the channel consists of sprue. Okay, this is sprue. No, uh, runners. And this is runners. Okay, and number three is gate. This is gating system. All right. Um, and then, um, injection uh, system. In the mold, there's an injection system. This one is very important uh, because you want to remove the product from the mold. And if we notice here, there's an injection pin. Um, uh, this is injector pin. This is injector pin. Okay. Uh, this one normally be designed um, um, at the end of the product to eject the part or to remove the part from the mold. Cooling system. Um, for um, injection molding, cooling system is also very important, especially when producing uh, very large masses or high, high, high production rates, high products. Um, uh, so cooling system is very important in order to make sure our product is um, um, not damage, yeah, and mm. okay, so that's it. Then cooling system, other than air, uh, cooling system may also use water in order to cool it down to cool the uh, to cool and solidify the final product as well as the 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 um a mold itself. So as a summary, a mold consists of one or two more cavities that determine parts geometry. Number two, distribution channels through which the polymer flows into the into cavity. Number three, injection system is, is important uh, to remove the part. A cooling system is also very important because we want to solidify uh, our products. And number five, air vent to permit evacuation of air from cavity. Injection units, there are three types of injection units available in injection molding, which includes reciprocating screw. This one is the most common screw being used. Um, number two is a screw pre-plasticizer, and number three is plunger type, a plunger type. So these types of injection can be found in uh, injection molding, but 
um, the function is the same, which is to um, um, to um, what, to supply a molten uh, to, to supply molten plastic into the mold into ca mold cavity. Clamping unit. There are three types of clamping units, which is toggle, hydraulic, and hydromechanical. Uh, which one to be select actually depending on types of machine. So from there we can design what types of clamping unit that is uh, required for uh, such machine. Um, okay, um, so toggle clamp is actually an actuator moves the cross head forward, extended the toggle links to push the moving platen towards the closed position. It provides high speed, high force at different different points and uh, suitable for low uh, tonnage machine uh, low size of machine okay whereas for hydraulic clamp it is used for um, a huge machine um, more flexible than toggle clamp in terms of setting the tonnage at given positions during the stop and uh, number three is hydromechanical clamp this one is designed for much more higher uh, um, machine or higher than the hydraulic machine Examples of products include uh, like Lego and um, uh, phone casing, mm, what else, mm, um, plastic, um, I mean contact lens and so on and so forth. Okay, now so let's, move in, let's, move in to, let's move on to um, uh, compression molding, built in injection molding. Oh no. So this one is actually um okay another types of um um a plastic processing which is compression molding okay this one is uh, suitable for the mosaic um the process starting from loading the mold compound which is called charge this is charge okay this is charge and then um mm, uh, bring the mold together to compress the charge. So this is the lower mold, okay? This is lower mold and this is the upper mold. Bring together to press the charge. The charge is heated by hot mold to polymerize and cure the materials into solidified. And after that, open up the mold to remove the part from cavity. Uh, this process is actually very simple as compared to injection molding and um however it is only suitable suitable to produce a very simple parts and um the advantages um for compression molding is includes like the process is simpler it is much more cheaper of course low maintenance because easier process less uh, waste low residual stresses because the product um, is actually very simple no sharp edges and so on uh, uniform thickness and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, for disadvantages, um, include um, longer um, processing time or cycle time. Number two is a lower production rate. If you're comparing with uh, injection molding, examples of product like electric sockets, electric plug sockets, housing, port handles, dinner plates, wear and uh, dinnerware plates, and so on and so forth. Now let's look at on how um, the process, the illustration of process for compression molding. Recognized as a premier supplier to the chemical industry, J.A. Harrison & Co.'s dedicated PTFE and engineering plastics facility gives us a complete in-house capability to produce a wide range of components as well as semi-finished billets.
Our polymers are purchased strictly from world-recognized manufacturers. Unlike thermoplastics, the viscosity of the gel above the melting point is too high for PTFE to be processed by traditional methods, such as injection or transfer and rotational molding. The process includes three systematic steps. One, compression of the powder at ambient temperature. Two, sintering. Three, slow cooling. J.A. Harrison can supply filled or unfilled PTFE. Contact J.A. Harrison today by calling 0161 832 2282 or by emailing enquiries at jaharrison.co.uk. Okay, so that is the uh, process for compression. Very simple and straightforward process. Okay, now let's move on to another types of uh, plastic processing or pra uh, plastic um, forming, yeah, plastic process, which is blow molding. And 
this one is suitable for a uh, thermoplastic as well uh, so um in blue molding air pressure is used to inflate a uh, soft plastic into mold cavity so instead of using molten plastic just now from previous process or powder plastic for blue molding it uses soft plastic um there are two important steps in a uh, blue molding which is uh, fabrication of starting cube which is known as parison okay so this is parison Number two, inflation of the tube to the desired final shape. For this case, it's following a bottle shape. Once it is blow, then following the uh, mold cavity, which is bottle shape. So, um, in blow molding, um, um, there's two types of blow molding that can be found, which is extrusion, and another another one is injection blow molding. Let's look at on uh, extrusion blow molding. The same step, um, which is um, producing or extrusion a parison. So for blow molding, we cannot avoid from having a parison because this is the main um, ingredient in uh, these types of process. Number two, um, two mold comes together. Okay, this one, this side, and this side come together, which the parison at the top and seal the bottom. Okay, the bottom part is uh, bottom part is uh, being sealed. Number three, the tube is inflated. It takes the shape of the cavity. And number four, mold is opened uh, to remove the uh, cold and solidified part. Let's look at the uh, process video for uh, in uh, for blow molding. In the blow molding process, plastic is heated in an extruder until the plastic becomes a viscous fluid. Then, this plastic is extruded through a blow molding die to form a tube shape called a parison. A mold containing a cavity is closed around the parison. Then, pressurized air is blown inside to expand the parison against the cavity wall. The plastic is cooled by the mold, the air is released, the mold opens, and the part is released. At this plant, the excess plastic at the bottom is removed with a knife. The part is set onto a conveyor belt where the bottles move along to the bottleneck trimmer where excess plastic is removed from the neck. The specifications for any blow molding machine determine the size and type of mold that can be used. These specifications include the extruder melting capacity in pounds or kilograms per hour. The actual maximum output of any extruder depends on the plastic type, the plastic pressure required, and the plastic melt temperature. The OEM's published output number will be on the optimistic side. To protect the thrust bearing and extend the operating life of the extruder, you should target no more than 80% of this maximum amount. The clamp force is the maximum force in tons that the clamp can exert keeping the mold halves closed against the force of air pressure inside the mold. Clamp stroke or daylight is the maximum distance between the platens when they are fully open. This distance sets the limit for the mold thickness that can be used and still allow the plastic part to drop out when the mold is open. So, um, that's in the blow molding pr uh, the process for extrusion blue molding now let's look at on the injection blue molding the process is the same as actually whereby it starts with parison is injected around a, a blowing road and number two injection mold is open and the parison is transferred to a blue mold uh, number three the soft polymer is in inflated to uh, for I mean following the shape of the mold and finally, the mold is open, the bloom product is removed. Now let's look at the um, illustration for injection blue molding. Oops, sorry. Okay, injection is performed. Mold closed, blowing the ferrison and product being ejected. Okay, 
So now uh, let's look at on the product uh, design consideration. Um, for all types of product that is going to be produced, things that we need to consider is its uh, strength and stiffness. Whether the um we should whether the product uh, can be applied to a uh, to a um situation which involves high stresses. So we need to consider that because plastic is not uh, as strong as metal. Impact resistant. Whether the capacity of plastic uh, can absorb uh, impact um, um, uh, as I mean as high enough as required by the product and the by, by the uh, design. And then its surface temperature. We know that plastic has a uh, low temperature, uh, low surface temperature uh, as compared to metals and ceramic. Thermal expansion. Um, because plastic is actually has a thermal expansion uh, higher than metals. Dimension changes. It can be easily changes due to temperature variations. So very difficult to control. And then the de uh, degradation. Uh, plastic can easily degrade when exposed to sunlight and uh, as well as a corrosive environment. Uh, for example, uh, salt water. And plastic are soluble in many common solvent is compared to if compared to uh, metals or ceramic. Um, other than that, uh, the extruded part, um, um, the the extruded part, which means that the uh, the the component itself, we need to consider the uh, wall thickness. Whereby for um, plastic, um, we need to consider the um, wall thickness. Uh, whereby it is better or it is good or desirable to produce a uniform wall thickness and um, because non-uniform wall thickness will produce non-uniform plastic flow and cooling and this will cause uh, the extruded part to warp and or twisting uh, out of shape. Hollow section um, uh, will complicate uh, the die design and plastic flow uh, so it is recommended to use solid extruded cross sections, uh, whereas corners, sharp corners, obviously uh, should be avoided. Sharp corners result in uneven flow during processing and produce a high stress concentration in final product, which means that product can easily damage, as compared to those uh, uh, that don't have um, uh, sharp corners or sharp edges. For molded part. Um, we need consider we need to consider the quantity, uh, because each part requires unique mold. I mean, yeah, uh, one part may uh one part one part, uh, can be used for uh one types of mold, and the mold is very costly. For injection molding, minimum production quantity that is economical is ten thousand pieces, for pro uh, for processes per processes. Uh, for compression molding, minimum economical quantity is 1,000 pieces. So, uh, we need to select the process carefully. Part complexity, uh, more complex the product, the final product, then the process will be much more expensive. But it is more economical to design complex mold than produce and assemble individual components. So, we need to consider that uh, such things so that... Um, um, uh, we don't use uh, more time uh, to produce uh, one single product. Wall thickness, cross-section is undesirable because that one uh, will produce uh, more waste. Uh, it is can cause warping, um, takes longer to harden. Corners, again, uh, avoid sharp corners they, because they interrupt smooth flow of melt, tend to create surface defects and cause stress concentration in finished part. Um, whereas for molded part, the holes, we need to consider the holes. Holes obviously will complicate the, de the mold design and part removal. Holes can also cause interruptions in melt flow. Draft or taper. A molded part should include draft to make removal process easier. Like the one being mentioned for, I mean, in casting process, we have to design a, um, a mold. Uh, to have a slight taper so that can we can remove the final product easily. 
tolerance um tolerance are desirable for injection molding because of shrinkage so this one not necessarily for plastic materials but also required for uh, metal other than that we need to consider the uh, distortion um uh what a uh, dice well uh change at uh, um I think uh, the rib and so on and so forth. Well, you can look at the design um, in order to um, uh, in order to have a proper design before you come up with what types of process is required to produce such products. So now let's look at to um, let's look at on the extrusion. Uh, another types of plastic processing which is a plastic extrusion hold on ya yeah. Okay, now let's look at to another um, topics for today, which is plastic extrusion, plastic uh, processing extrusion. So we are going to look at on, on how the extrusion process being produced, the, uh, as well as its uh, machine and uh, the extrusion defects, which can be found from the products. Um, in general, the process is actually more or less the same as in um, Injection and um, injection plastic processing. Uh, it is suitable for um, um, for I mean this process actually not uh, not only suitable for polymers but it can also be used for plastic as well as ceramic. Okay, examples of products include tubes, pipes, holes, structural shape windows, frame, door moldings, sheet and film continuous filament and so on and so forth. The final product for extrusion is also known as extruded. This is the equipment or machine for extrusion. So if you can see here, the um, equipment uh, more or less the same as in, in, in injection uh, process. Fake stock is in a form pellet or powder. Okay, this one. Uh, is fed into extrusion barrel this one uh, fixed section yeah and then uh, it is being heated and melted and forced by uh, rotating screw this is screw rotating screw to flow through a die opening so uh, this is the die um if you notice the difference between injection and um, extrusion process is that in injection uh, it requires it need to have a mold at the end of this machine whereas for extrusion um we need dye over here okay dye means there's no um uh, the the the, uh, the mold itself is in open ended it's not closed ended okay so uh the dye is not part of the extruder we need to design separately okay now, uh, the pellet are fed into uh, are fed by gravity onto rotating screw. Electric heaters are used to initiate uh, initially melt and solid uh, melt the solid pellets. Solid pellets rotating screw moves material along the barrel, uh, mixing mechanical working generates additional heat which maintains the uh, melting temperature and melting melt uh, soften um uh, the, the the plastic to maintain uh, in a um, liquid form. And then um, this screw actually uh, have several functions which includes a fixed section whereby the stock is moved uh, from the hopper pot and preheated. Compression section, the polymer is transformed into liquid consistency and trapped air is extracted and material is compressed. And metering section, the melt is hom homogenized. Sufficient pressure is developed to pump it, in, uh, to pump it uh, through the die opening. And um, this is uh, the screw uh, dimension if you want to refer in detail 
uh, it has its own design of course we cannot simply design the screw so it has certain for example a certain a channel depth uh, the fix section uh, as well as metering section so you can look at uh, the terminology for um, dimension or uh, dimension for the screw and if you notice here in extruder machine there's a breaker plate there um, the function for breaker plate is to filter continuous and hard lumps from uh, the melt, build pressure in metering section and strengthen the polymer flow and remove its memory of circular motion applied by the screw. Um, other than that, there's a die configuration. The shape of die orifice determines the cross-sectional shape of the extruded or the final product. Common die profiles include um, solid profile and it can be hollow um, like tubes uh, or piping, yeah? a wire and cable coating, sheet and film as well as a filament. These are the common die profiles which can be found in the market. Um, now let's look at one by one what is solid profile okay um, when the metal exists the dye uh, it is still soft actually so it is cooled uh, by air blowing or water spray or, or uh, water spray or by passing it through a water channel well it depends on types of machine um, that is being designed and of course much more complex uh, machine than the um, 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 of course the the cost will be much more higher or expensive to compensate die swell the die opening is made long enough to remove some of the memory in the melt um, so basically once it is being um, uh, being being pushed or come out from the die Normally, we take certain types of length so that we can, we can remove the one that uh, have um, been, I mean, um, to remove the uh, previous uh, parts that have been, ha have used uh, the same dye. So that's why we, um, we, um, we normally, we cut it into certain, uh, a certain length so that the final product um, is accurate. Uh, as needed for shape other than round die opening is done is designed with a slightly different cross section so that the effect of die swell provide a uh, uh, shape correction hollow profile is used to produce uh, products like tubes pipe hose and so on and so forth um, a mandrel or cylindrical rod is required to form uh, the hollow shape the mandrel is held in place using a spider the polymer melt flows around the leg supporting the mandrel to reunite into a tube wall the mandrel often include a channel air blown is um, air is blown to maintain the hollow form of the extruded extruded during hardening or during um, solidification Products are cooled during water channel or a water field tank. For wire cab wire or cable coating, a uh, coating of wire is one of the most important extrusion process. Polymer is applied to the bare wire as it is pulled at high speed through the die. Slight vacuum is drawn between the wire and polymer to promote addition of the coating. And then um, there's a cooling process as well. Um, um, by uh, the, the, the cooling process is applied by uh, passing it through a water channel. So uh, as for the defects for extrusion um, include such as mud fracture. Uh, this one is the worst uh, defects uh, which can be found in extruded. Very high stresses acting on mat immediately before and during it flows to, uh, through the dye result in highly irregular surface on the extruded can be caused by sharp reduction at dye entrance causing turbulence flow that breaks up the mat. So this one is very, um, um, I mean, 
the worst uh, the worst defects that can be found which means that we need to redo the um parts shark skin this one really common uh, defects surface of products become roughened uh, upon exiting the tank if you have look at um uh, if you have touched uh, shark skin or have you seen shark skin shark skin uh, the surface is very rough it's not smooth as human skin okay the friction at the surface of the dry opening results in velocity profile across the cross section uh then size stresses develop at the surface and this material is stretched to keep up with faster moving center core these stresses cause minor rupture that roughen the surface area bambooing uh, uh two types of defect bambooing if the velocity gradient become extreme prominent marks occur in a form of bamboo pool so um, this is also much more severe defect uh, which means that the product need to be uh, redo so um they that would be the end of our um section or our class for uh, today and um for your own understanding you may do these exercises and you can keep it and um you may submit it at the end of the semester so uh, you don't have to submit by this week or by next week just keep it and you may submit by the end of the semester with that i thank you very much for your kind attention and cooperation hopefully we may meet we can meet again in the next class so thank you very much and I'll see you again in the next class okay bye Thank you.